As a kid, I was always fascinated with history. I read about it, I watched documentaries, but now I want to visit and walk the ground of those historic places that I've spent years studying. Join me on my trek, History Adventures. In this episode of History Adventures, we're at the Little Bighorn Battlefield, and we'll be following the battle starting with Custer arriving at Medicine Tail Cooley and then moving forward as the battle progresses. Various sources reference the time of day during the battle, and they are different based on the source that you reference. I'm going to use one source rather than going back and forth with multiples, since they are all within two hours of each other. When it comes to referencing a duration of an event during the battle, there is some consistency, so it gives us a better understanding of what took place. Now with Custer's movement, that is a matter of conjecture, but there is some testimony and archaeological evidence that supports his movement. I have a hypothesis based on a few sources that will be presented in this video. With that, let's take a look at today's episode. It is roughly 3.30 p.m. on June 25th, 1876. Custer and his men have started to engage Indian warriors on the banks of the Little Bighorn River at Medicine Tail Coulee. Reno and his men are fighting in the timber and are quickly becoming overwhelmed. Benteen has received both Knipe and Martin's messages from Custer to come quick and bring the packs. Benteen is now starting up the bluffs and the pack train is now nearing the lone teepee. Custer and his men have gathered in the area around Medicine Tail Coulee at the edge of the Little Bighorn River. The banks of the river in this area are too steep to make a crossing. Plus, Custer can now see that he's not at the other end of the village. They also see the non-combatants that are fleeing towards the north. The soldiers find an area that they can cross known as Ford B. More and more warriors are starting to move towards this area to keep the soldiers from entering the village. There is evidence that Keo was wounded near the river. His boot and bloody canvas leggings were found after the battle very near the river. Also, Gustav Korn made a statement that he saw Keo leading men towards the river before he lost control of his horse and was carried away from the battle. There are a few soldiers killed and wounded at the river's edge, and more and more warriors are gathering at the river's edge to engage Custer and his men. While Custer is fighting near Medicine Tail Coulee and the river bank, Reno is fighting for his life as he and his men are fleeing the area of the timber. We covered the Reno Valley fight in a previous video you can watch on our YouTube page. Roughly 25 minutes has elapsed since Reno first made contact and then moved into the timber. He, along with his men, are going to flee from the timber, being pursued by the Indian warriors towards the bluffs. Benteen is moving up the bluffs and can see Reno's troops engaged with the warriors and fleeing that area. The pack train is now passing the lone teepee. Custer and his men have now been engaged at the river for about 15 minutes, firing into the Indian village. Custer has no idea that Reno has fled the area in a rout and is moving up towards the bluffs. After about 20 minutes of fighting here at the riverbank, and the growing number of Indian warriors began to push the soldiers back away from the river and the area of Ford B. Custer and his men began an organized retreat back from the river to the higher ground. Indian warrior testimony is that at this time the soldiers split into two groups. Some of Custer's men were fighting dismounted and others were fighting mounted. The group that was closer to Ford B and Deep Cooley began to move up Deep Cooley to what is now known as Calhoun Hill. The other group of troops on horseback headed up to what is now known as Loose Ridge or Nye Cartwright Ridge. Reno and his men have reached the top of the bluffs with the Indian warriors continuing their attack. The Indian warriors take up a position on what is now known as Sharpshooters Ridge. Benteen and his men arrive just minutes after Reno stops on top of the bluffs. Benteen stops to help and fortify Reno's shattered command. Custer and his men continue to move to higher ground as the Indian warriors follow. It takes a few minutes for the troops to continue moving up to the higher ridges. The troops moving up towards Nye Cartwright Ridge have been able to put distance between themselves and the pursuing warriors since they are mounted, but they suddenly encounter Indian warriors returning from an early morning scouting. Wolf Tooth, along with 40 to 50 Indian warriors, attack the troops at Nye Cartwright Ridge. From the area where Reno and Benteen have stopped to take up a defensive position, they hear a volley of fire and see troops on the distant ridge. The Indian warriors that have been attacking Reno and Benteen suddenly realize that troops are behind them and much closer to the village and their families. Most of the Indian warriors break from attacking Reno and turn to attack the new threat, the soldiers that are closer to the village. 
The group of soldiers that were moving up Deep Coulee first form a defensive line on what is now known as the Finkel-Finley Ridge and then continue to move to higher ground to form a defensive position on what is now known as Calhoun Hill. Indian warrior testimony details how these soldiers were the ones that were being pursued the most by warriors. The warriors keep their distance since the soldiers' weapons have a greater range and they still do not have a large number of warriors to make an attack. As the warriors break off their attack on Reno and his troops, the number of warriors in the area around Calhoun Hill will start to increase. During the slight lull in the attack, Reno with a few men search for his adjutant, Hodgson. They find his body near the river. Reno takes his personal belongings and returns back up to the bluffs. Reno and Benteen believe that Custer has abandoned them and that Custer will be able to take care of himself. Gustav Korn, who was carried away from Medicine Tail Coulee and the river's edge, arrives where Reno and Benteen have taken up a defensive position. Korn tells them of the situation and that Custer needs assistance. Only Captain Thomas Weir shows concern and wants to take action. For roughly 25 minutes, the soldiers on Nye Cartwright Ridge have been fighting off harassing attacks from the group of warriors with Wolf Tooth. The soldiers on Calhoun Hill are also fighting off attacks. The troops on Nye Cartwright Ridge move to consolidate with the troops on Calhoun Hill. Once all of the soldiers are together, the warriors said they heard a bugle call. Then the soldiers dismounted and took up positions on the hill. Behind Calhoun Hill is a depression known as Horse Holders Ravine. The horses were kept in this area as the troops formed their position on top of the ridge. While the troopers fight off harassing attacks, more and more warriors are beginning to gather in the area. The non-combatants are now gathering near what is known as Chasing Creek or Squaw Creek. The only way to stop the Indian warrior attacks is to capture their families and force the warriors to stop fighting. Custer divides his command again. Custer, with two companies, moves northward behind what is known as Battle Ridge. At what is known as Last Stand Hill, Custer and his men head towards the Little Bighorn River and what is known as Ford D. When Custer and his troops round Last Stand Hill, this is their view. They can see thousands of non-combatants gathering near Squaw Creek. Custer and his men head towards the riverbanks in an attempt to capture some of the non-combatants. Their movements have been spotted, and Indian warriors begin to head to the area of Ford D to stop Custer and his men from making a river crossing. With the warriors now firing into Custer's troops, the soldiers dismount and return fire at the riverbank. Other Indian warriors move from the greasy grass ridge towards Custer's men. Custer must have known that his small group could never cross the river into thousands of non-combatants and take prisoners. Plus, now the soldiers are engaged with warriors that are rushing to the area. Since the soldiers are fighting dismounted, the horses are taken to an area away from the fighting. A soldier would be tasked with holding several horses while other soldiers were on the skirmish line. As the warriors approach the area, they spot the horses and a small number of soldiers holding them. The warriors move in and stampede the horses. With the horses went the soldiers' extra ammunition and equipment. The cavalry soldiers' worst fear was turning the tide of battle in the favor of the Indian warriors. Many of the troops are now foot soldiers with only the weapon and ammunition they had with them when they dismounted. In our next episode, we will follow the battle to Last Stand Hill and then with Reno and Benteen fighting on June 26, 1876. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of History Adventures. Please like and comment to the video. And if you could, please subscribe to our page and share with everyone you know that's a history buff. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next episode.